In this one, we're going to be taking a look at the Sony Xperia 5 Mark IV. It's a device that's quite confusing in the sense that it has everything to be a really good device, to be something that's very competitive on the market, but it's lacking in some ways, particularly when it comes to the camera, which is what Sony are mainly, mainly known for, for me anyway, uh, besides their TV and music and all that kind of stuff. In fact, in the studio right now, I use a Sony FX3, a Sony A7S III as well, and other Sony cameras that I use for stills. And that makes it quite a tad bit disappointing when it comes to what this device is all about. But that's not to say it's not a good camera though. You just have to be patient. And there's something about that that we're gonna talk about. Let's get into it. Now, the device itself is a really good looking device. I mean, it's it's got this different aspect ratio, which is really nice. It's wide when it comes to watching movies, which I really like. And it feels really nice in hand. When you're holding it, it just feels really nice and squeezed and just feels fits perfectly in, in the palm of your hands compared to other devices. In fact, if I bring the Nothing Phone 1 uh, into the uh, shot, you can see that it's a lot wider to hold like that, but when it comes to the uh, Sony phone, you can just do that and it's just really nice and I end up just spinning it like this because it becomes addictive. I just spin it because it's so lightweight, it feels, feels really premium and solid as well. Um, one thing that is lacking here is there's no facial recognition, but if we look on the right side, uh, we do get uh, your fingerprint sensor, which is integrated into the power button. You got your volume rockers there, you got a dedicated shutter button. Uh, this will take your eSIM and nano SIM as well. And this is um, protected using Corning Gorilla Glass of Victor on the front and back as well, I believe. And I just love the display, it looks really nice. It's near bezel less, but top and bottom, you still get some bezels uh, because the top houses the front facing camera, which is a 12 megapixel camera on the front. And then when we rotate to the back, we can see a bit more. It's got that NFC logo there, which Sony are quite known for with all their products, especially if you see their headphones and stuff like that. But you get a triple camera lens setup, which are all 12 megapixels. We'll talk more about the camera uh, later on down here. And it's quoted that Zeiss T uh, quoting on there. And uh, yeah, this is actually scratched it a little bit, even though this is not meant to be easily scratchable. I wanted to test that, so I've been putting it in my pocket, putting it in my bag with all kind of things, and that's the result of that. So if you're gonna get one of these, don't put it in your bag or your pocket with keys, Get or get a case for it, and you'll be fine. Back onto the device though, so 6.1 inch display, we've got OLED display, so colors are really good on here. 120 hertz refresh as well, so when it comes to gaming, this is no problem at all. It's great for gaming, in fact. If we load up uh, Call of Duty here, and you can see that you've got a game, uh, center in the corner, game and answer, uh, rather. So you've got your quick access uh, menu there, you've got game mode, which is, which is where you can switch to uh, performance. Performance preferred means everything is proper cranked up, so including your refresh rate and battery life might be affected. So you've got focus settings, which means you can switch things like your notification off, adaptive brightness and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can release the RAM as well, so nothing is interrupting your gaming session. So you can rest assured that when it comes to gaming, you're not interrupted, you're fully focused, as it suggests. You can take screenshots, uh, multitasking is there as well, and record and stream uh, if you wish to do that. Uh, but otherwise, you can just get straight into your gaming, and once you got in that performance mode, things are cranked up already for uh, 120 hertz refresh and then you can start gaming so uh, let's just uh, get back out let's do a multiplier get multiplayer game if I can get my words out here you can start to notice the bezel there so top and bottom there that bezel there could have been really nice if they weren't there um, it would have been nicer but it's still pretty cool you've got this long display here with a different aspect ratio to what you normally get allowing you to fully take an advantage of that cinematic mode. So when you're watching movies or gaming like this, you get that real estate for your screen play. So before we get into the gameplay, um, some specs for you. So this is running on Qualcomm's uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So it's not the latest one because you got the Plus uh, version as well, but this is actually pretty good. Uh, this phone was launched back in September, so it's still running all the latest sort of uh, software as well. You got Android 12, which is upgradable to Android 13. Uh, in terms of storage, you can go for the 128 or the 256 gigabytes of internal storage. But regardless of which one you go for, they both have eight gigabytes of RAM. It's running on Android 12, which is upgradable to um, Android 13 if you want that, so you can get the latest 
Android operating system running on there. It's running on Adreno 730. So all that combined, you get really good gaming experience. You get really good graphics experience and that 120 hertz refresh as well. It has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which in my experience so far lasts all day, the whole day with no issues at all. So battery life is not the problem here. Design is not the problem here. Gaming experience is not the problem here. Watching movies and all that stuff is not the problem here. In fact, you get 3.5 mil headphone jack, which is pretty much rare on any smartphones these days. Even a cheap device like the uh, Nothing phone doesn't come with a headphone jack. So with this one that's a bit more pricey, you get headphone jack in there, which means you get to benefit from really good sound quality that comes with the device, which is something that Sony are really good at. Uh, so you benefit from that. But what I really want to talk about though is where this becomes confusing or uh, what this device is actually about. Who is it for? Is when it comes to photography, and video making. But before we get into that, a bit of gameplay for you. So here we just do Call of Duty Mobile so you can see how well this runs. One thing I've noticed while I'm gaming a lot on here is this gets really hot. Um, not hot in the sense that you can't hold it, but it gets considerably, considerably, uh, if I can say this word, considerably hot that you notice it compared to uh, other devices that I've used uh, before. Uh, so if we do start, we go on one of my favorite maps, which is uh, Nuketown. It's very easy to play. It's one of my favorite ones. I always end up playing this map uh, over and over. Uh, so you can see things look very smooth already. It's just flowing really well. Um, I'm guessing the frame rate on it is really good. Um, I can't really tell what the frame rate is right now, uh, but let's just move around, move things around here. You can see how smooth this is. There's no lag at all. Input lag, none. Uh, we just move forward and start playing. So. Running through here, if you go faster, start shooting very quick to aim at the opponent. No problems there at all when it aims in and out. In fact, reloading as well, ducking and diving, things looks really good. So you can really enjoy a gaming experience on here. And even though it feels really light and skinnier uh, in terms of profile, slimmer profile in terms of the aspect ratio, uh, you're still getting a really good experience here. And it actually helps with the gaming experience because it's wider, so you can basically put your finger on it without uh, taking taking up the screen for gaming. So you can actually still see what you're doing, and there's no issues there at all. So let's leave gaming for this uh, for a second. Uh, there's no problem there. Like I was saying, design is good, uh, durability is good. Besides that, it scratches easily and. Uh, things like your sound quality is good as well, making phone calls, all that jazz. Battery life is excellent. I have no problems with it using it over the last, I don't know, nearly a month now. So I've taken it away on holiday with me just to test a few things. And uh, in fact, I loaded this up with all my movies that I wanted to watch from my last flight, which was eight hours flight, and it lasted me the whole flight, and then some. I watched a bunch of movies and a series as well on it, which had an hour episode, an hour per episode, and about eight episodes in that particular series. and there was no problem, which I was quite impressed, although it got hot. You've got stereo speaker, if you really want to listen to loud music on the go. Um, the fingerprint sensor works really well as well, but I know I keep digressing. Let's get back to that camera. So in camera, you don't get your standard camera app like you do on most smartphones. It has its own Sony-esque design of a camera app that's on here, including that one for the videos as well. Before we get into the app and show you some examples, uh, the camera setup itself, I know I said 12 megapixel, a triple camera lens setup, but to be more exact, exact, the main camera is a 12 megapixel f1.7 aperture. Then you have your 12 megapixel f2.4 telephoto lens, and then you have a 12 megapixel uh, f2.2 uh, ultra wide angle lens on there. Back to the camera app. So once you've loaded the app, up top you notice the menu up top that says basic next to it. And if you tap basic, basically this is just a point to shoot camera at this point. And this is what most smartphone are, which is what most people do. But in this mode, Pictures don't always come out or result in a really good picture. So what I tend to do is put into auto mode, which means things get automatically adjusted for me in terms of like things like ISO, white balance, etc. In that mode, pictures looks better, but I don't like the interface because it then takes over half of the, of the actual thing and you're almost tempted to shoot holding a phone in landscape mode. But in this social media age, you want to be taking your photo portrait mode most of the time, which is what I do. So First of all, that menu there is a bit of an overkill for me, but for those who are willing to be patient and are photographers and stuff like that, this would be really good for them. They would love to, they would really love this. So you've got that 16 by 9 aspect ratio there. You, you can put on raw, so you can shoot raw pictures and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Autofocus and all that stuff. If we tap it again, just like your Sony cameras, 
we can scroll up to program auto, uh, shot, shutter priority, you then got manual exposure, and then you got your memory recall as well. Uh, if I cancel that for a second, we can go back into this and look, look at your manual exposure. This is where that patience that I was talking about comes into place because, okay, you can switch between the lenses so you can go 16 mil, 24 mil, or go telephoto at 60 mil. But if we stick to the 24 mil, you don't have to change things like your ISO, so you can adjust your ISO settings, uh, you can adjust your shutter speed, your aperture settings, and so on in manual. So that gives you extra options, give you extra control over what you can do, so your shutter speed can go all the way up. You can adjust brightness depending on the day and the environment when it comes to shooting your photos. So that's great. And you can lock it into place as well so nothing gets tampered with whilst you're shooting out and about. Um, for me, yes, it's okay, but most people won't have the patience to do that. Um, someone like me, a lot of the time, I just want to get my camera out and just shoot away. I don't have to, I don't want to have, to have to worry about changing settings, which is kind of frustrating at time with the Xperia uh, 5 Mark IV. Because when you just shoot point to shoot, again, the camera, the photos just doesn't look that good. In fact, I post some videos on uh, Instagram stories and Instagram in general, and people were like, what did you take that with? It doesn't look that good. And uh, that was disappointing. And then if you click more, you got option for creative and slow motion, uh, which is cool, basic stuff. Uh, it's nothing new over there. If you look at the bottom here, you got things like your shooting modes. So you can do bracketing, well, continuous, continuous, and uh, you know HDR high and stuff like that. So you can do your self timer, or you can turn it off completely. You got flash there, and you got your bokeh settings. So you can get that blurry background if you want to do that as well. But naturally, it does it anyway. It looks really good because of the f 1.7 aperture there. And then you've got things like being able to adjust uh, your brightness levels, exposure settings, and your contrast and uh, color temperature and stuff like that. You can adjust all those things. And then another thing is if you're switching between the camera focus, uh, focal length, it's not smooth. So if you're going from ultra wide and you're going back, it's quite juddery. It just jumps between the focal lengths. Again, if you're doing that in video, it, does, it doesn't look good at all. So we close the photo hat for a second. Actually, before we do that, let's look at some samples here. You can start to see some of the photos that I took where photos looks natural. There's no problem there at all. It looks natural, which is good, uh, but it's lacking detail uh, in some areas. So if I, to, if I was to scroll in here, you can sort of see that the C now starts to look like, I don't know, a phone didn't take it. A really good phone like this did not take it because the detail is just bad. Like the resolution is just bad. Um, I, I just don't know what to say. Um, scroll across again. If you look at it out, just zoomed out, it's fine. But as soon as you go in, it just lose, it just lacks detail. It looks like I've taken a photo with something completely different, which is so annoying. I really want to like this phone, but you know this camera is just not doing it for me. Even when the lighting condition is good, this is Barbados where lighting was good, things are looking great. It just doesn't do that. It just doesn't just didn't do it for me. And um, I think. There was one photo that I took on the plane as well, looking at the uh, landscape from the from my flight, and it just looks absolutely horrendous. Especially when you then punch in and zoom in and use two times, I uh, use that telephoto lens. It just again, it's just just not there. And then we go to video, so we got another app for this one. It's a Cinema Pro app. Let's not show that again because hey, there you go. Phones already getting hot. Just me by using it now, gaming in the background and doing things phone is already hot and yeah just yeah <laughs> but the video you can shoot 4k videos you can choose different frame rates there you can shoot up to 60 frames uh, per second actually 120 frames per second here uh, so if you go all the way up to 120 you can shoot 4k uh, which is pretty cool uh, you can choose different looks as well your venice looks and brightness and you can, you can basically again requires patience so you'd have to go through that and select which one suits your preference and then stick to that and start recording. Um, you got manual focus in, so you can focus manually or you can do autofocus and let the camera do all that job for you. In video though, what I do like is the interface. So if you were gonna be holding your photo phone like this, you know, to record videos, I think it looks really good in terms of interface. It makes it look very professional, especially when you then mount it on a tripod or something like that. It looks really good. You've, you've even got like a spirit level thing to make sure that you're balanced and stuff like that, which is cool. I like what they've done there. And you can select a project and stuff. But one thing to mention here is stabilization. I, I was gobsmacked to realize that stabilization is actually on because when you play back the videos, 
you can almost see all the micro movements in my hand, um, which is something I don't notice when I'm using my iPhone, for example, for videos, or even the S22, S22 Ultra doesn't do that. So again, stabilization on this is not up to par compared to other devices. So that was quite disappointing as well. I wish the stabilization was much better than what Sony's put here. For me, everything's perfect on this phone. You got Music Pro as well to record audio. I think everything's perfect on this phone besides the camera. And I don't, I don't even think it's the hardware, I just think it's the software. And I think Sony are just overcooking it. They're not either overcook, overcooking it that it's not doing the right, it's not doing what it's meant to be doing, or it's just not doing it properly. It's just not there. And I think Sony needs to stop working on putting hardware and stuff like that in terms of megapixel count and all that stuff and work on that software. Speak to your camera department, make this much better than this is. I, w I really want to like this, and it's still getting hot this day and age. Look at this. It's already warm and it's warning me and stuff like that. Um, but I think it's hard for me to recommend it. It's not a device that I really want to go, yeah, go out and buy one of these because it, it, it needs work. It, des it definitely needs work. And uh, I think that's my overall opinion when I came back and I thought I really want to like it, but I don't. It's not something that I'm going to be able to recommend to anyone because the camera is just not there. Even in good lighting condition. Let's just, let's not even talk about low lighting condition. It's, yeah. But anyway, over to you, let me know what you think. And I hope I haven't rambled, rambled on too much or just turned a video review into a rant uh, as such. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, drop them there as well. I'll do my best to answer your questions. And uh, as always, please do subscribe. It does help my channel out and uh, hit the bell notification. So every time there's a new video up on the channel, you get notified as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.